Everybody. Thank you very much, Richard. Thank you very much to the CRIF for inviting me tonight. I'm very happy uh, to be here in front of a, such a prestigious audience. I'd like to tell you something that, first, my stronger supporter in France has been Richard Presque for all these years, and I think we should applaud him for this. It's been very, very good. And in the US, I had two strong supporters. I must say I'm very happy to see that Mort Klein is here. Thank you, Mort. I mean, when I was made ridiculous by so many people all over the world, Mort Klein supported me since the beginning, so thank you very much. And Malcolm Online as well was supportive of me, and I really thank him very much. I know he's not here, but please transfer him my congratulations and admiration. So, let me show you the picture. Do all of you know this picture? Yes. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Okay, do all of you know that it's a, it's a hoax? Yes. Is there anyone who doesn't know it's a hoax here in this room? Ah, Mr. Arlinger. I'm sorry. Okay, so you don't know some... I'm not going to interrupt you, and I'm just going to listen, so, so thank you. You're not going to listen? No, I am going to listen. Oh, okay, sorry. Okay, <laughs> okay very good. That's all. Very good, very good. At least we're talking for one word. Thank you very much. Okay, so it was on September 30th, as Richard said, 2000. It was the beginning of the Second Intifada, and it was the trigger of the Second Intifada. As we have a limited time, and I know you're, I know you're very tired, I'm going to tell you how we will proceed. First, I'll show you the impact of this hoax. Second, I'll, I'll explain you why it's a hoax. And third, I'll tell you why this hoax is the right battle to win for Israel's image, and I would say even for French democracy. So it had a huge impact all over the world. Two Israeli soldiers were lynched uh, two weeks later in Ramallah, and there is a, people were screaming, Adura, Adura, Adura to avenge Mohammed Adura. It was a year before 9-11, and you could see uh, videos on the internet put by Bin Laden <coughs> to incite against the Jews, against Israel, and the Western world. Most Arab countries issued postage stamps, erected monuments, named streets, under the name of Mohammed Adura. In 2002, Daniel Pearl, the Wall Street journalist, uh, Wall Street Journal journalist was beheaded in Pakistan to avenge Mohammed al -Dura. You can see it on the videotape when he was, which was put on the TV. More recently, in, in 2012, Mohammed Merah in Toulouse, the French citizen who killed French soldiers and three young children, Jewish children, and their, their teacher, said just before being killed by the French police that he killed these young children, Jewish children, to avenge Palestinian children killed in Gaza. And I think it's interesting to see that some people went on TV a few days later and explained and mentioned very clearly that it was a response to the killing of Mohammed al -Dura. So 12 years later, we had Mohammed Nehra. And of course, I would say last but not least, here is a picture of the largest square of Bamako. Bamako is the capital of Mali. You see? So, in Bamako, the largest square, I would say, is the Place de la Concorde of Bamako, where the French army is fighting now against radical Islamists, is named after Mohamed al -Dura, and this is the place of the martyr, of the Palestinian martyr. So to summarize, I would say that Mohammed al -Dura is the icon of hatred of the 21st century, which, was, which is against the state of Israel, against the Jews, against the US, and against the Western world. So let's see what was on TV on, on the 30th of September 2000. So the French, France 2, which is a French, uh, it's a state-owned TV, broadcast a 50-second news report. Um, showing this boy and his father hidden behind a concrete barrel. 
and being killed and targeted by the Israeli army. They pretended that the boy was killed with three bullets and the boy got 12 bullets. This news report was filmed by an Arab cameraman who was working at that time for France 2 and for CNN. He refused, uh, when he sent this picture to CNN, CNN refused to broadcast them because they, they asked for warranties of authenticity, which were never delivered by the cameraman. But France 2 uh, edited the, 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 the footage. Charles Underly put his voice over. He's a French journalist. He's a French correspondent of France 2. He's a very much respected uh, figure of French journalism. Sorry. And he happens to be French, Jewish, and Israeli. So it gave, it gave lots of credibility to the news report. And very generously, he offered the film to all the TVs in the world for free. So the day after the IDF, the Israeli army, apologized for the death of the child. And I would say that the blood libel was launched. A few weeks later, some people came and said, well, there is a problem with this news report. It doesn't seem to be exactly what we thought it was. They concluded first that the shooting couldn't come from the Israeli side. And then some other came with other conclusions that it was a complete stage hoax. What I mean, and I want to be very clear, a complete stage hoax means that what you're seeing here are not a dead person and not a wounded person. It's completely fabricated. Okay, I'll explain you. So the problem is that at that time, nobody wanted to, I mean, nobody could get the media attention uh, for the revelation. And the Israeli authorities were so busy in their, I would say, what they call at that time, peace process, that they were not interested in this uh, revelation. I would say the Israelis didn't realize that Mohammed al was, was going to become an icon of such hatred. So, I must say that at that time I had nothing to do with media criticism. I used to be a stockbroker and then a businessman, so I had nothing to do with that. In 2002, I saw a documentary, a German documentary, showing first that this, the bullet can come from the Israeli side. I was shocked, I really investigated further. I met some people who showed me the truth, who showed me most of their evidence that it was completely staged. So I really looked deeply, deeply into that because, as everybody, I was really surprised to hear this story, but it was obvious everything was staged. I'd like to remind you, France 2 version of the fact, and I'm sure that I'm in front of American people, so I know that some of you know how to use a gun. So let me give you their version of the fact. First, they say that the Israeli soldier shot at the boy and the father for 45 minutes at a distance of 80 meters. Can you imagine such a fixed target at 80 meters? Okay, I have to ask any soldier, any guy who really used a gun before, he would tell you it takes one second, five seconds, no more. Then they also said that the boy, the, the boy got three bullets, high velocity bullets, and was killed, and that the father got 12 high-velocity bullets and was wounded. But there is a big problem here. You can't see a single drop of blood. No blood at all. I think it's very important to see that after, despite 15 bullets of high-velocity bullets, there is not a single drop of blood. So, in order to prove, to prove we were right, we looked for more footage filmed that day, we used our common sense, we asked for experts' opinion, and we confronted France too with our conclusions. During these past 10 years, we brought more than 50 strong pieces of evidence of the staging. On the other side, France too never brought a single piece of evidence that it was a real document. So, to make a long demonstration short, here are some major discrepancies which prove the nature of the hoax. So I told you about the, the distance. So the distance, 80 meters, this kind of target takes one second, not 45 minutes of shooting. No blood doesn't make sense at all after 15 bullets. And there is something very, very interesting at the end, is that we found the pictures which were filmed by the same cameraman, Francis Cameron, after the boy was dead. 
and we put them online because I think it's very important for people to know. And what we've seen is that the boy, after he dies, does this. He raises his elbow, turns his face towards the cameraman, and puts it down. And at the end, he raises his foot, which is even more amazing for this kind of uh, scene. So, we discovered some other absurd facts, and we hired ballistic experts, forensic scientists, biometricians, and even graphologists to check all the testimonials. And we substantiated our, our demonstration. So because I said and published it was a hoax, I was sued for defamation by Charles Underlin, the much-respected French journalist, and by friends too. Uh, it seemed that I was going to win the case uh, because the prosecutor, when he saw the trial, said that I was right, that I brought enough evidence of the staging. But <laughs> I must tell you that France too, which is a state-owned TV, brought a letter of Jacques Chirac. At that time, he was the French president, who was praising Charles Anderling, saying that he's such a great journalist. So, incredibly, I was found guilty of defamation. It was in 2006. I immediately appealed, and France too, at the appellate court trial, was forced to bring the raw footage to the court. And when the judges saw the raw footage, when they saw the kid raising his elbow, looking at the cameraman, when they saw all the other scenes faked, I mean staged, and people uh, jumping into the ambulances with no wounds, all these fake scenes, then they found me not guilty. It was in 2008. But France 2 networks are very powerful. I would say that almost any journalist working in France, not only French journalists, but even American journalists working in France are supportive of France too. And I must tell you that they issued a petition against me called, saying that I was kind of a Holocaust denier, and they gathered more than 1,000 French signatures, including French so-called intellectuals, French politicians like Jacques Long, like Hubert Vedrine, like, some, like Jacques Attali, I don't know if you heard about Jacques Attali, all these kind of guys. And um, it was kind of difficult. In 2009, I must tell you that Nicolas Sarkozy offered to Mr. Charles Angelin, after he lost the trial, he offered him the Legend of Honor. So he received the Legend of Honor after he was proven that he was a The other, the blood libel, yes, Gates received the Legend of Honor. So France too went to the, France too went to the Supreme Court, which is the court of annulment in France, and asked the verdict to be cancelled. And last year, in 2012, the verdict was cancelled, and the judge said that the courts, the, judge, the judges of the Court of Appeal, didn't have the right to, to ask for the raw footage. French, French system. So we went back to the Court of Appeal, it was three weeks ago, exactly three weeks ago, and here I showed a complete visual presentation, which lasted one hour, I presented as well a whole scene reconstructed of the scene, so we, I was able to prove where were the cameramen, where were the guys, so, so everything was ridiculous. And we're expecting the verdict in almost exactly two months on April 3rd. Nobody can predict the verdict except the very relig religious one, because they checked for me in the calendar, ah. and since April 3rd is just the day after uh, Pe Pe Pesach, Passover. So they say that it's the day just just after the Hebrews were freed. So no. <laughs> okay. Well, I don't know if I'm going to win this part of the battle, but I can tell you that at the end of the game we'll win because we have the truth the truth with us. Everything was staged, and we have all the evidence for that. Despite the silence of media outlets, many people knew the truth, but they were scared to speak out because they were afraid of the media, and especially of the French public TV. And again, thank God I had Richard Presque with me. Um, by the way, I'd like to ask you something. I'm sure you're going to meet some other French Jewish leaders during your trip. Please mention them the case and ask them why don't they join Richard Presque's courageous fight, because we really need the other French Jewish leaders. For eight years, I've been fighting illegally, politically, 
and in the International uh, Journalist Festival's meeting just for the truth. Uh, like me, I must tell you that every day you must see when you watch TV, when you read newspapers, you must see something very pro problematic about Israel. Uh, you realize that when they come to Israel or Middle East, it's not always accurate. But we cannot fight all the lies. We cannot. So I'd like to explain you my point of view and tell you why I think that this case is the right case to fight uh, for the truth. First, it's a very easy case to demonstrate. I mean, ask anyone who has already show, uh, has already seen this this presentation, visual with videotape. It's a very easy uh, demonstrable uh, fake. It's a very important uh, picture. I mean, this is the worst picture which has ever been created since the creation of the State of Israel. There is not a, such a strong picture in the world, in the Muslim world, everywhere in the world, to defame Israel. And I'd say it to, to be deterrence for Israel bashers to see that there is a price to pay when you defame Israel. And the good thing as well is that this case can be fought in France, in the US, and elsewhere, through media outlets, through the legal systems, and through the political spectrum. I'd like to share with you an experience that I had a few months ago when I went to the Elysee Palace when François Hollande was elected. I met um, some of his advisors to present them the case and said, well, we're almost sure that you're right and that it's a hoax. But the main problem is that nobody asked us to confront France to, France to with the truth. So you're the only guy lobbying for the truth. So please, when you'll meet French political leaders, actual ones, but the, also the ones who are in the opposition, I've seen that you're meeting some people like Copé, Jean-François Copé, from the UMP, who someone I met when he was in school, 25 years ago. Please mention him the case, make him understand, because when he was working closely with Sarkozy, he never wanted to confront the French TV with the truth. So I think it's very important to confront them. And I'd say that it's not only for Israel and the Jews, but it's also for France. Because when you're saying that France is confronted with this in Mali, the people who are fighting in Mali are fighting with people who are indoctrinated with this kind of pictures, you know? This really, uh, really this brainwashing against Israel and the Jews. And we also had Toulouse. I mean, in Toulouse, we not only had Jews who were killed, we had French soldiers, even French Muslim soldiers who were killed because of, this, because of the incitement. So, I'd like also to ask you another service. I'm sure you're going to meet Israeli leaders. And I think it's really important for them. I know that they're working on it. I know for them it's difficult to, to understand. But since then, uh, Charles Anderlin is a very uh, powerful figure in Israel because he has so much connection there that he, is still, he can still, I would say, put pressure on them. So I think it's important for Israeli leaders to understand that we expect them to fight uh, for the truth, to avoid us to suffer from blood libels. For those of you who can read French, I brought this magazine, which is the only French magazine, non-Jewish French magazine, which dared to let me speak. So this is the only one. I have a copy for each and everyone here, if you want. Uh, included, you'll also find my business card. Uh, with my contact info if you want to be able to reach me. Because I'd like to tell you something, to spread the truth. I've been lecturing for the past seven years all over the world. I went everywhere in the US, but I also went to India, to Turkey, to South Africa, really everywhere in the world, just to make people understand that it's a hoax and it's very important. Um, I'll probably be back in the US on April, next, the second half of April or some lectures because I've been invited by some university. So if any of you is interested, uh, use my card, send me an email, and we'll be in touch. Uh, thank you very, very much. And I must tell you something, all together we can make the truth prevail. Thank you. I've seen some words about uh, 